Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review. Now, I reviewed a film called Steeter, so I could get to this review. Because I figured if I'm going to review this, I might, as well re I might as well review a film that did it in a really, really, really dull, boring, shitty way, and that was Steeter. Now, Mosquito, I had reviewed this film before, but it was on my old channel, which was like five, six years ago. And I wanted to re-review this film again on this channel have a review of it on this channel because I thought this is a fun B movie I don't like the word cheesy I don't use the word cheesy a lot because I don't know what the hell cheesy cheesy usually means in a bad way like people say hard target and Cobra and Van Damme Stallone movies Schwarzenegger a lot of other movies are cheesy and I'm like no I think they're honestly good I could say that with a straight face this on the other hand I really enjoy but if you call this film cheesy, then I'm like, okay, this is a film you can call cheesy. Like, this is a film I can understand as cheesy B-movie. But it's a very fun movie. Mosquito from 1995. This is a film I saw quite a bit of times when I was a kid. I'm like, hey, this is how you do a creature feature. Doesn't take yourself too seriously. You tell there's a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek quality to it has some fun special effects goes at a pretty good pace for its 80 90 minute running time the acting can't call it good acting but it's kind of fun to watch acting like if i say it was good acting i'd be lying but it's fun to watch acting or it's acting like okay it's not really good but i could deal with it because they didn't bore me as like the actors in steer bored me I think because also be, there's a certain energy to it. I think the director, Gary Jones, he must have worked with, I think he worked with Sam Raimi on stuff. I believe he worked on effects or something for Army of Darkness. He must have learned something from Sam Raimi because there's some, a little bit of energy to this film. I think that really helps as well. And some nice gory bits. So hey, you have some fun practical effects. Fun gory bits, energetic use of the camera that he must have learned from people like Sam Raimi. The acting is not great by a long shot, but I can deal with it. Uh, in this film, I can deal with it. Uh, Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface in the original Chainsaw Massacre flick, he has a pretty decent sized role in this. And fun. I think that's really at the end of the day. Steeder from 1993 was not fun. It was dull. It didn't. It looked like it didn't even want to be about killer miss deals. It looked like it wanted to be a drama about land development deals, and evil businessmen. And this though, it's a big killer mosquito movie first and foremost, and it's not ashamed to admit what it is. I think that's what makes this film work. And I would show you DVD. But if you want the DVD, you don't have to get, have to get a loan from your bank. Because last time I saw the DVD, it was like $200. So all I have is a DVD-R that I got because of my good friend Mike OCP. It's a DVD-R. Because again, I would love for this for Stream Factory to release this. If you're, you're releasing all these other two, two movies per disc, why not have Mistito on one of them? Hell, you can have Steeter and Mosquito. Fuck Steeter, but I'll take Mosquito if I... I'll, I, I'll guess I'll take Steeter if I can get Mosquito. I mean, it even starts off with some decent model work of these spaceships. Some decent effects of these spaceships. And one of them crash landing on Earth. I thought it was some decent model work. And they have this cool shot. I think of it's a mosquito being born. That's what it looks like. I mean, the way it looks, it looks like an alien. Probably when I was a kid, I'm thinking, is that an alien? No, it looks like a mosquito being born. <clears throat> I like that this. A really, really <laughs> looks really cool. And you get the idea they were feasting on this dead alien body, which again, I thought that was a cool idea because usually, it is. Look at Steeter, it's toxic waste. Usually it's toxic waste. Government experiment that fucked up, toxic waste. No, it's they 
mosquito. They suck blood. They suck blood from a dead alien body. I like that idea. It's not the normal idea. <clears throat> and it goes with this B movie feel to it. <clears throat> and it doesn't take too long. You have this couple, the woman is getting ready to work at this park. It's a park ranger. Her boyfriend's going with her. They're driving. And like three minutes into the movie, they hit this giant mosquito. And it is a giant mosquito. You look at Steeter, the mosquito's about this big. And this film, they're like this big. Like they're they're fucking huge mi mosquitoes, which makes sense. It would make much of a threat. If one's just this big, it's not much of a threat. But these guys in this movie, they're huge. And either a lot of it's practical. You have some pretty decent stop motion effects. But the one they hit is practical. Nowadays, if you saw this on Sci-Fi Channel, if they made a movie like this, it would just be a shitty CGI mosquito. But I like the use of practical effects. I think that helps because Jerry Jones was an effects guy. Although it's funny that when they hit it, it's this giant fucking mosquito. The two, the couple don't seem too impressed. I'm like, okay. But their car gets fucked up, and they go to a motel, and they have to figure out how to get their vehicle fixed. In the meantime, at the, the park, you have this guy, Ron Ashton, who unfortunately is no longer with us, but he's he's a, another one of the park rangers, Hendrix, I believe. He was actually, I didn't realize, he was actually part of the band The Stooges with Iggy Pop. He was a guitarist, and he co-wrote some of their songs. For example, what was that song that was in like Transporter 3 and other movies? That come on. Come on. Uh, if you look at Indie Pop and the Stooges. Like I will be your dog or something. It's a song like that. I'm like, oh, okay, that guy was worked with Indie Pop and was in a band. Okay, Ron Ashton. And he comes in and he's like, all right, you little bastards, let's throw down. And has the smoke and stuff to get rid of little steeders. And then you introduce a Gunnar Hansen, who has his brother and another guy. They're bank robbers. And Gunnar Hansen is probably the best actor in the group. Like, he does a decent job. It's not a Academy Award, award worthy, but he does a decent job. But... It doesn't take too long before the mosquitoes start attacking and actually attacking. Steeter, once in a blue moon, when you're about ready to fall asleep, one pops up that's this big that just does this on a guy's face, and then afterward you just see a couple welts on the face. This, mosquitoes are big, and you see them plentiful. I mean, there's a guy trying to use an outhouse, and he gets chased by one, and... Gunnar Hansen's brother is a dumbass, tries to shoot it, but absolutely shoots their, their buddy. But Gunnar Hansen gets a gun, and boom, has a shotgun, fucks it up. Practical explosion of the, the mosquito blows up. Goopy effects. Which is the bottom line, what you want in this kind of movie. You want these creatures to blow up in practical, goopy effects. That's a big plus. And these mysterious start attacking people. They attack these two fishermen. Uh, as proboscis, I believe it's called. It comes out. There's like this green goo that shoves it right into a guy's eyeball in gory fashion. This actually has gore. Unlike Steeter. Steeter didn't have gore. This actually has gore. I mean, it shoves a fucking... It's thing... The sub blood right into a guy's eye. And it, when it sucks blood, you see under its belly that's... Your blood's filling up. I'm like, all right, that's cool. It chases another guy, and this is where you get some pretty decent camera effects, where kind of like Evil Dead is going through the woods and going under a branch, and it kills a guy, gets it in his chest. Then you have this couple having sex, and a mosquito comes in, caresses her, and puts a proboscis right on her butt cheek. 
they start sucking up blood, and then they kill her, uh, her hubby. Where he loses it all, motherfucker! <laughs> I mean, it's meant to be. F I could tell this movie was meant to be funny. It was meant to be humorous. And then you have this uh, another character introduced, this meteor chaser played by Steve Dixon. And he gets with the couple and the who whose car has been fucked up, and the three of them start finding dead people. They find a dead fisherman. Um, they find a campground and lots of dead bodies. I think that's another thing I like. I like the scene where they're finding all these dead bodies at this campground because it shows that these creatures are a threat. I mean, they took out an entire campground of people. And you see all these dead bodies and they've been dried up. The blood has been sucked out. It shows that these things are a threat. So I like that scene. And they find the Ron Ashton character hiding under a bow, and the four of them uh, try to figure out exactly what's going on, how to get out of there, grab an RV, they get out. Um, they pick up Gunnar Hansen and his brother. And that's like the first half of the film. So the first half, you get some good, some fun kills introduction of characters, some nice introduction to the Bid Mosquitoes, and then the second half of the film, you get a, that's when the action really kicks in, the second half of the film. Because you have them in the RV and the Mosquitoes just either with st some nice stop motion effects or some practical they get into the RV, or they're on the outside of the RV and they're shooting shotguns, blowing away Mosquitoes left and right. The woman's using an act like a little hatchet to fuck them up. Just some really lot of shotgun fun. Um, which goes on for a, quite a while, so it's pretty entertaining. And they crash, and they have to get into these tunnels, and Gunner's bro Gunner Hans's brother gets killed in a pretty fun way over the top I mean that's another thing this film is over the top and you can tell it's meant to be over the top I mean when it kills Gunnar Hans's brother and sticks this thing inside the guy the guy's blood's being sucked and his eyeballs pop out and then not only do they pop out they explode <laughs> so that was pretty that was fun fun goopy gory effects and again, the tunnels. And it, it reminds me of Aliens. Not as good as Aliens, of course, but this is on a micro budget. So, for a micro budget, they did, they did a lot of stuff for a micro budget. That's the thing. I mean, I don't know if it, if it says how much this film really cost. I want to check real quick. Because nowadays, you have terrible CGI barely any action and I'm talking like sci-fi channel straight to video films but this film cost if I can find it two hundred thousand dollars this only cost two hundred thousand dollars they got a lot for two hundred thousand dollars especially the second half of the film with these creatures you know blowing the shit out of them then down to the tunnels and find them back poo, 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 shotgun fun the meteor chaser guy Thinks okay, we're running out of bullets. Let's put some fire here so they can hold them back. Um, ultimately they get to a farmhouse, and you have Gunnar Hansen finding the chainsaw, and you have a f nice little throwback where he says, "Man, I haven't handled one of these babies in about 20 years." And of course, this was '95. The original Texas Chainsaw Master was around '74, '75, so. That was a nice little thing. And you get to see him use that chainsaw for a little bit as well. So that's fun to see Gunnar Hansen do that. Uh, the Ron Ashton character, he's usually the one getting the short end of the stick. The guy who was uh, the park ranger, one of the park rangers there. But he even says, you know, I got a steener up my ass. My lay's killing me. And I've been crawling around in a stinking sewer pipe. And this is all I get. Two crummy shells? Fine, here's three. Thanks. Hey, this is wet. It's got bug goop all over it. 
Ashton, shut the hell up. Or I think his character's name's Hendrix. Hendrix, shut the hell up. And it continues to always just the short end of the stick. But you get some nice POV shots. Not POV shots like Skeeter where it was a shitty piss yellow shot and you just see him do this. No, but you get some nice POV shots and like in the tunnel, the gun here, you see a pull back. Like you see some pretty decent camera work and some POV shots that again, he must have been looking at Sam Raimi to get it helps the scene get a little bit of energy. It pretty much they hold off hold off in at the farmhouse. I guess a la Night of Living Dead type. Shotgun fun. Uh, the boyfriend rips the wings off of one and throws it away. Turn her hands and gets a chainsaw and fucks a couple up. F well, fucks one up with a chainsaw and then you see him swinging a bit. I would like to have seen him carve a couple more in half. You really only see him get one with a chainsaw, but we're supposed to assume he got more than one, but. Wouldn't it be nice to see him carve up a couple more with that chainsaw? That's one thing. <clears throat> um, there's one that they burn. And they find out that in the basement there's a shitload of them. There's a nest in the basement. So they make up a plan to blow it up. So the meteor chaser guy, he, he makes like a three minute timer and they're going to use his dumb waiter. And the girl and the boyfriend get up safely. But Ron Ashton, again, he just is short in the stick. He's going up. And the dumbware crashes right into the basement. And that's the last we see of them. So that's another thing that kind of bugged me. That's no pun intended. We never see him again. So are we to assume that he died during the fall of the dumbwaiter? Or later on the house blows up, he died from that. I think it would have been nice to see maybe him getting Ron Ashton. and then Because what happens is... The, the meteor chaser guy, the dumbware is broken, he doesn't know what to do. Gunner Hansen gets a chainsaw and he goes, I'm going to rescue your friend. And he goes down to the basement and he's swinging his chain chainsaw. This is a scene that we could use him actually carve a couple up, like cut one in half, cut one in two, and let it go this way. That's what I would like to have seen. But he just swings it. It would have been nice to actually see him cutting into some mosquito flesh. That's just my suggestion my little problem with that but I like Gunnar Hansen's line you know, ain't life a bitch and he's being attacked and his chainsaw gets thrown house ex explodes the couple's alive they think the meteor chaser guy's dead but he hid in a fridge he did it before Indiana Jones Grant wasn't a nuclear explosion, but he did it before Indiana Jones. He hid in the fridge and he lived. And the mute, he was the black guy. He didn't die. He's the black guy. He didn't die. He was sort of the leader of the group and he lived because he used his brains. The meteor chaser guy, the black guy lived. Because, you know, usually in these movies, not all the time, but usually the black guy dies. But he didn't die in this. Um, just Ron Ashton's character, which I guess he died because of the dumb waiter, because we never see him again. Again, yeah, maybe if Gunnar Hansen came down, got Ron Ashton, and then they both fight back to back, maybe that would have been. Then just he goes in the dumb waiter, and I guess to assume he died from that. If not, he died from the explosion. But, I mean, yeah, is the acting great? No. You just say it's bad acting, but I had fun even with that. I mean, the characters didn't annoy me to the point that I wanted them to die. I think because it worked well within the movie they were making, if you had these performances in Aliens or Predator or or Halloween or... Think of another movie... Tremors, like a higher caliber movie, it would have been much more of a problem. But the fact that it's in this kind of movie, I could deal with, and they didn't bore me, and the film didn't bore me. But then went at a pretty good pace. It was a fun film. You had a lot of giant mosquito action, and them blown up in goopy, gory ways, and them 
you know, get into an ass cheek of a girl, get into an eyeball of a guy, or kill another guy, his eyeballs pop up and out of his skull and blow up, or you, know, you have a house blow up at the end. Model work, but still, not CGI. This looks better than CGI, I'm sorry, this does look better. Some pretty decent practical effects, and it has a certain energy and fun to it. Did you tell that the film did not take itself too seriously? And that the director knew first and foremost this was a big killer mosquito movie. If there's a giant mosquito movie, this is probably the best you could make it. Oh, well, I say that, and I don't know if that's the case, because you look at something like Tremors. Tremors, of course, beats this heads over heels, and you just say, well, this. That's about giant worms underground, but Tremors just top-notch acting, humor, and everything up down center. So I don't know if I could say, but Mosquito for a directed video film that cost two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars is pretty damn good. Or I, I I'll say pretty damn fun. Good. Again, yeah, I think people could watch it go, wow, this acting's pretty bad. Yeah, you'd be right, but it just it didn't bother me in this instance. Uh, and it's not like the dialogue is going to win any awards. But if you if you like creature feature B movies, if you're the type of guy that likes cheesy movies, and I hate using that word cheesy, B movies, that isn't riddled with CGI like fucking sci-fi channel stuff nowadays. And if you can find Mosquito, because you can't find on DVD, went out of print long ago I guess if you can find it online to watch I think it's worth a watch it's a it's a fun movie it's an entertaining film I grew up with it when I was a kid and I'm like if more direct video films were like this I think it'd be better if sci-fi channels films were like this film gory bloody over the top effects Energetic pace, yeah, bad acting, yeah, <clears throat> but I could deal with it. <clears throat> sci fi channel films should be more like this, to be honest. I think this is like a four point something. I don't know if it deserves that low. I mean, I've there's so many worse creature feature movies than this film. It's a film about mosquito, you probably know what you get into, but it's actually pretty fun entertaining film at least to me but thanks for watching take care and we'll see you later bye bye